welcome back to another episode of the slice tennis hosted by your boy jp and steven bouton mr canada he's in montreal right now giving us some live coverage from the tournament going on and hey while he's there, he might be making some little extra money because this podcast is presented by Betway. So shout out Betway. Shout out to all that coin out, out there waiting to be had. Y'all, if you're if you're trying to make some extra cash responsibly, go to betway.com and they will take care of it. They have the best lines out there. We have a great show for you lined up, and I'm about to hit you with a quick three topics. Number mm-hmm. one, Novak. Guys, put the gun down. Steven is not as big of a hater as you all are making him out to be. We're going to talk about Novak winning the gold medal, his first Olympic gold medal. Got to talk about it. Got to talk talk about it. it. And and Steven already talked about it, so you should go check out that video also on this channel. And in order to see that, you should subscribe. Second story, we got to talk about another Canadian. Not Steven, though. We're talking about Denis Shapovalov and this L umpire that screwed him out of some points and some money in D.C. We'll get into all of it. And then lastly, we're just going to get a little update from the tournament out there. Steven, boots on the ground, fighting the good fight for the Slice Tennis. Hey, and if you are watching and you're at that tournament, make sure you go up and say hey to them. Show some love. Get a photo so we can share it on all of our social media pages. We're all about it. And, of course, we will end the episode with Smash or Pass. There's your rundown. Mm -hmm. Steven. Talk to me. How was the week? It's been great. I mean, the last few days have been a blur. Uh, great intro, JP. Love the energy. Thank you, sir. And yeah, it's. I'm in Montreal, as you can see. Beautiful kind of sky coloring behind me. That is uh, nice. Very, very French of it. Very nice. Um, yeah, my last week has been hanging out. Not, I think, very uneventful week for me. And then coming here. So flying here oh, we did the red eye for those of you who don't know red eye got in, on the plane in vancouver at like 11 p.m and then show up in montreal at like 7 a.m and because you go ahead three hours as well mm-hmm. so it was like the clutchest thing ever was i showed up at my hotel at best western here in, in montreal and they let and they had my room ready at 8 a.m for the, like that night so i literally got to go into my room at 8 a.m and sleep for like three hours and then i went to the tournament is that normal still, in Canada? 8 a.m. No, like check in times like 4 p.m. normally. Wow. So I was thinking like I'm going to just be zero sleep because I essentially didn't sleep on the plane because I just didn't prepare at all. Total fail by me. Yeah. Not a pro tour. I forget what it's like to be on the tour. So I, you know, I didn't even bring a pillow, anything. It was just, I literally I raw dogged it. Have you heard of that, JP? Uh, oh, I, yes. I, I'm all on the trend. I, I've done it a few times. <laughs> Have you? Well, I, I have not because that's insane. So the concept Wait, but you're having raw- a baby soon. <laughs> oh, di- different raw dog. Different touche, raw dog. touche. I've been, yeah, I've been there. The, uh, the concept for you, those of you who don't know what we're talking about or are about to shut off the podcast. It's not like that. <laughs> so, raw dogging a flight is not doing anything on the flight. Like basically looking at the flight tracker on the screen in front of you, essentially. Right. Yep, just grinding. You, no headphones, no phone. Don't pay. Are you even allowed to like look around? Like, no, you're supposed to just like look at the screen and watch the plane. And it's usually like you know, it's a five hour flight. You're just watching it go all the way to your destination without taking your eyes off. And it's like in the, especially in the modern world, which is so distracted and so hyper focused on everything, that it, it seems like mind blowing to me. Do you do you uh, are you a journaler at all? I I was in my life at one point. I'm trying to get back on the train. Saying maybe we can hold each other accountable because I'd also like to get back into it. And these flights are the way to do it. Yeah, no doubt. I, uh, I will do that. We should start that and we can, we can talk to each other on the show if people care about what we wrote down. But my, my strategy this time was I had a couple beers in the, in the Vancouver airport and I think a big pizza. And then I was like, I'm going to conk out. Didn't, didn't work exactly. But anyways, yesterday got here, went to the turn tournament uh met up a ton of people and then went to the draw ceremony where yannick center was there hey. and gregor dimitrov and i was like sitting front row in this cool montreal place and you know they're like right there and then we do a little then we do a little um uh you know scrum with them anyways very cool more to get into it later so that's been my week i'm obviously yeah boots on the ground as you said this week Love and it. you're holding it down at the home fort so how's your week been i i think i heard some bad news from the airways 
from your week. Yeah, but I, I mean, you want to get into it. This is probably a disclaimer. I just want everybody to know that I am still grateful for the life I get to live. I have a roof over <laughs> my head and I have food to eat every day. So I am grateful. But I don't know of many other people that could get through this week that I'm that I'm getting through right now. Damn. Hey, been, I'm getting married in less than two weeks. Not this coming Saturday, but next Saturday. So next Wednesday, I am going back home to Greenville, South Carolina for the wedding. Yeah. My lease that I'm currently in ends on August 20th. Clearly, that's after the wedding, but we're going on our honeymoon. So my lease ends August 20th. I go home on August 14th. So I need to be out of my apartment pretty much by this weekend. We had a spot to move into. They said, oh, it's a few days ago. Sorry, guys. It's actually not going to be ready until August 28th. So I have six days to figure out a place for me and my future wife to live. And if, I mean, everybody knows moving sucks. And in, in Nashville, things are expensive. So you're trying to remain in the budget, but... Well, I'm really busy with work. We have a, a time-consuming job, and it's just ever since yesterday, I've been dreading this whole entire week, and I'm trying to have a good attitude about it. But when you're supposed to have the best day of your life in here in about two and a half weeks or less than two weeks, and you don't have a place to live, you're, you're married and homeless, it makes it not the best day of your life and almost turns it into one of the worst. But all this could be solved. All this could be solved shortly. Didn't you already have one delay on the lease? Like, didn't they already push it back once? Yes, man. We were supposed to originally be able to move in July, like, 19th. Then they pushed to August 9th. Now they pushed to August 29th. Cheapers. They gotta get and this is there. the craziest part, actually, because, oh, my God. We call and ask them, so what's the deal? Like, why isn't it ready? And this is not the leasing agent's fault. It's obviously the owner of it all. So the poor leasing agent and I'm a patient guy. I'm not like, you going to yell at anybody on the phone, but it's like, so what's going on? They're like, Oh yeah. You know, it's just like the, uh, the elevator, it needs to pass its inspection. Like, <laughs> Oh, my fault. I didn't realize elevators took 31 days to inspect. <laughs> and so I'm like, all right, we, it, we just can't be lying out here. I'm saying it's the <laughs> elevator. <laughs> man uh, you're down bad bro that's but you're gonna you're gonna get through it it's gonna be okay and i think it will still be the best day of your life like for sure and yeah. trust me uh your lady is gonna be she's lucky to marry you you're lucky to marry her and she's gonna, gonna be so pumped after the wedding that she's not gonna care where you guys are staying if it is with your parents or her parents or whatever uh that she doesn't is. matter in the grand in the grand scheme of things it's gonna be water under the bridge right and you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be another mountain that you climbed. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, I could sit here and say, why me? But why not me? That's how I'm looking at it. I love it. If, if there's JP anybody has never failed to come up with a quote or something motivational to say, he's my guy. Hey, God gives his silliest battles to his biggest clowns. Remember that. <laughs> oh, that is funny. You are a clown because you're hilarious. So <laughs> thank you for being here and making me laugh, even through your tough, week yes sir speaking of weeks jp did you want to run through the results from last week because this is going to come out on monday we're talking sunday evening and a lot of stuff has gone down essentially yeah a lot of stuff has gone down we're going to get into it but what who are the winners and losers from this last week jp winners and losers first winner biggest winner of the weekend novak djokovic he beats alcaraz and a little fun fact for everyone in 2012 and 2014, the Wimbledon runner-up went on to win the Olympic gold against the same exact opponent. That's crazy. So Murray loses to Federer in Wimbledon, beats him in the Olympics. And as we all know, Djokovic loses to, or loses to Alcaraz in Wimbledon, beats him in the Olympics. Fun fact for you. Another fun revenge? fact. Exactly. Revenge. Alcaraz is the youngest man to reach an Olympic final since 1904. <laughs> now, I do not know how to say her first name, but I do have a minor crush on her. Zhang? Zhang. How do you say her first name? Yeah, you got it. G oh, Zhi Zhen Zhang? Zhi Zhen Zhang. Or oh, wait. No, no, no. I'm messing that up. Fudge. I'm messing it up. 
One second. WTA, also, please fix your enunciations on your website because it's just like you ask them to do it in the worst soundproof I'm, room ever. I'm going to get killed on the podcast for that. I literally... Okay, there's a there's I'm pretty sure there's a male player from China with the same last name. There is his name is G. Is Zhejiang. And her name is Kin Wen. That's how you say it. Kin Wen Zhang. That's right. She defeats Donna Vecic. Vecic? Vekic. Vekic. God man. Legend in the she's a legend in the tennis game. I don't know if you know why. I've heard some rumors. Don't talk about them. They're dirty. I won't. Um, she's but, not dirty though. She's great. Yeah, she seems awesome. We'd love to have her on the show. <laughs> Zhang, first Chinese women's gold in singles tennis for the for obviously the Chinese. And then Vekic was the first Croatian to win a silver in singles. And apparently she thought about quitting six weeks ago. Next, she's been having a great year. Anyways, yeah, I don't, I don't know what was going on. I just I didn't do too much deep diving into it. So if anybody knows, let us know in the comments why that was a thing. And then next up, we got Musetti. Unfortunately, he defeats the Canadian Felix to win bronze, and he's the first Italian man to win a medal in a hundred years, and the second Italian man in the history of the country. Which I wonder if Sinner is a little bit salty. Um, I can an I can answer that later on. Perfect. That is, you, you're in my head with Iga's last name. Uh oh. Schweitek. <laughs> Let him have it, people in the comments. Let, Let him me have, have it. it. It's been like seven weeks. Schviontek. Schviontek. There's no N in your last name, so I, I know it makes no sense. But anyways, but she beat. I mean, I don't even know where to start with this one. I, I know her first and middle name, Anna Carol, Carolina. Shmidlova. Shmidlova for bronze. And that was the first tennis medal in Poland's history. Damn. So, you, obviously. Hubert Hercanch hasn't been pulled through in the medal department. <laughs> yeah, hey, step your game up, big dog. Hey, glad to see him back. He's going to be in, or he's yeah, in Montreal, I saw him right? today. I saw him, walk, I saw him walking by. He's like, just Let's this big go. tall guy looks like Jar Jar Binks out there amongst all these kids asking for autographs. It's great. God, he's he seems like the nicest guy ever. Um, oh, yeah. right. And then a little shout out to the doubles. Just the only people were shouting out in doubles, but Paulini she wins gold in doubles with her partner Sarah Irani. Irani, probably Irani. Irani. Yeah. And Sarah Irani becomes the seventh woman in history to win the career Golden Slam in doubles. So shout Damn. out to her and then city open this sebastian was playing like kind of as we started i don't know if he won or not i can look it up real I'll quick i'll tell you right now three, i know he was down two one he won oh sebastian quarter wins for america he wins from behind four six six two six zero whoa i wonder what happened there fabio caboli does a classic Italian bagel in the last set. Gosh. Not classic Italian joking, but Musetti has done it multiple times. <clears throat> so not joking, but not joking. Yeah, well, I guess I have a little scar tissue for how hard the Italians went at me last time. I even tried to have a little fun with them. They'll come around. They always do. You had pizza tonight for dinner, so you're already mending the bridge. Um, that's right. So, yes, about, I believe that's his first ATP 500 uh, championship. Yeah. But... I I would say so. And then Bedosa, she wins her first title since 2022. Obviously, she's been injured. She's been battling with a whole bunch of different things. So good to see her back in the winner's court. And that is your results over the past weekend, which has been a busy week. It's been a huge week. Um, speaking of Bedosa, Sitsa Pass was impressed today. He was looking like a little bit bumped. He was looking, at, look, looking a little cold. You know, he's a nice guy. He's a bubbly guy. He was looking a little cold. And then I saw... After that, he tweeted, he said, shut the front door on Twitter <laughs> about Bedosa winning. So his girl won. So he's happy about that. He's got to be happy about that. Good for, good for her, man. But we got to bring it back to the biggest storyline of the weekend. And you, you already hit on it. Like I said before, y'all go watch Steven's video he made earlier on the reaction to the Djokovic-Alcaraz match. But he becomes the fifth person to win the Golden Slam. Steven, 
How, how sick were you, anyone? I was not sick. I was Dude, happy for that. You were sick, bro. You were sick. You guys love to make it. Just because I he's not my main guy as far as a favorite fan, I literally genuinely did today feel warmth and happiness for him when he won. I saw a man who has been conflicted in his mind for a long time about whoa, whoa. He, gets to, he gets to 24, the most majors ever. He's still out there freaking out on court, losing his shit. He's, you know, got all these other records and he doesn't seem at peace yet as a person. Although he says he does. You watch him on court and you're like, that's not a man who's at peace. Oh, man, come on. He's at peace. He's two different people. Two Maybe. different people. No, he's he's got his spirit where he needs to be in life. I'm joking. But like, you know, just from accomplishments. He's, he, and he's talked about it. He said it's still not fun to be Novak Djokovic grinding for titles. Even after he got 20, 20 in 24 it was during the australian open he said that but today i saw him like the weight of like one more thing he felt like he couldn't get the gold medal he got today and he did it by beating the baddest man potentially ever you know we'll see how what the record would say but alcaraz right now is on like he's on one of those runs that people just like talk about one yeah, yeah. one one wimbledon killed djokovic in the final wimbledon and then Djokovic comes back and plays a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant match today to win. Because Alcaraz didn't play bad at all. He didn't. Hey. Djokovic played an incredible match, served unbelievably well, played, did exactly what he needed to do. So, no, when I saw him, like, you, the raw emotion come out of Djokovic right when he won, looked at, back at his box, I was like, that is absolutely amazing. You got to hey. just love that. You got to give but, him props. But be real, when it was in that, the second set tie break, who were you pulling for? I don't know, man. I was, I, uh, no, I, I, I was pulling for Alcaraz. I will say in my there head, there you go. Probably because I wanted to be three sets. I do love Alcaraz, but I'm. A, I'm we a all love Alcaraz. Fan. We all love Alcaraz. But yeah, I knew he didn't have it when Djokovic hit in the first point of the tiebreak. Djokovic hits the cross court forehand, clean winner from nowhere, and I was like, damn, he hadn't really been doing that for the last like home like he'd hit some big shots in the match and he was playing pretty big but right. that was like oh gosh okay and he got the mini break and then he then alcrats got it back and then he did it again <sighs> at like two all i think to get the mini break back and he never looked back and i was kind of like yeah it's over Djokovic, he's like stepping up to the plate and it's like that's what he does you know people he said what pressure him. i think i saw him say that he what I think I saw him like at one point he looked at the camera and was like, what pressure? Is that what he said? Was yeah. he saying that to me? Was he saying yeah, that to I think, me? I think so because I afterwards, I want to say he was like F Steven, but I don't know. I, I can't <laughs> confirm. He could have said, I would have loved the shout out. I would have loved it. The I, I, I love how you asked for the apology today, but there was none needed because in that video, I literally spoke 100% facts. Facts machine send it my way. I was speaking only facts. I said he felt the pressure and that's kind of an ambiguous statement because of course he feels pressure in every match to win. But in the Olympics up until this point, he had not handled the pressure. So is, or is it safe to say Federer didn't handle the pressure in the Olympics? Yeah, sure. He didn't handle the pressure in the Olympics. He got to the final in 2012 and he lost to murray although he had just played like this seriously epic oh, semifinal against Juan martin del potro tired out you know he wasn't playing lorenzo musetti i'm joking I'm, oh. joking I'm joking that's too far but yeah no you can now say that Djokovic handled the pressure of the olympics and playing for serbia he finally did he had not done it previously which was a fact and now he's done it and i'm happy for him but so it, you, you can know, so we can quote you like if, if an article was written, it would say Stephen Bouton says the pressure doesn't mean anything to Djokovic in the Olympics. That's not. No, I don't even think that's true. The pressure is immense. He talks about rising to the occasion to handle the pressure and not breaking yourself. And he was able to finally do that because I'm sorry, but losing to Zverev in 2020, he's breaking himself. Djokovic is a way better tennis player than Alexander Zverev. Is he not? Oh, he is. He is. Is he better than Juan Martin Del Potro? It depends on the day, you know. <laughs> okay. Now, now who's the hater? Anyways, <laughs> I'm saying in these other tournaments, he's the one who kind of beat himself. Those guys did play amazing tennis. But again, he he lost his mind against Verov 
And today he kept his mind and he played one of the best matches I've seen him play in years. And honestly, I was thinking about this after the video. I think it's the most impressive victory in my books from him since like the 2011 season in like uh, yeah. 15 years. Well, I mean, he even said uh, in his post game post match presser, like this, this is the biggest like achievement of my career, which I don't know. Do, do you believe that? Do you think that's I don't the know. biggest? Like, I don't, career? I don't really think like, I think, I think in this moment for him is true. I don't think he's ever wanted anything as bad as this and then got it and had been denied. Right. He's never really been denied. He's always got his thing that he wanted. He got to number one pretty quickly in 2011 after he went on that crazy start to the season and he won all, all the majors and they, you know, he finally passed Federer and, and Nadal's records and that, but that was seemed inevitable for a while. But this one was a big question mark with his knee, with the way that Alcaraz was playing. And then, you know, we all like to think that he's, you know, time doesn't matter to him but four years from now like he doesn't have a good shot at winning that i'm sorry he's so oh, I, this is his I last say that. <laughs> i'll say it i'll say it for you but this was kind of his last chance to really have a good shot at it and he stepped up so i think in the moment this he's never won anything as bad that's probably why he said it but i think getting the all-time record of majors um you know all these things but i guess in a way like those are all those are all records that could theoretically be broken and right. be kind of taken away from you now he's a gold medal winner for Serbia. That can never be taken away from you. It's not really a record. It's like a thing he's done. You know what I mean? And just like you said, to beat Alcaraz, like I think I saw something Alcaraz has won. Now after this loss, it's like maybe 22 of his last 24 matches. And oh god, it was so it was so beautiful. He's crying in his daughter's arms. I what I want to know, I want to know about young Djokovic, his son that i guess he does he have two sons and one daughter i think only one son and one daughter and apparently the the son is like he, he's a big tennis guy like he's he's into it all yeah he probably and, loves it and you see that like he wants to be a right now he's young obviously he wants to be yeah. a pro but yeah. you saw the photo of him holding up the serbian flag in the in the crowd yeah i just can't i the dream world in i don't know how old this kid is but say like in 20 years or 15 years we we're gonna have the two photos side by side it's gonna be him cheering in the, cheering his dad on in the stands with the serbian flag on the top yeah. and then on the bottom that gold medal beating a 37 year old outcraft maybe man that would be crazy that would be crazy we'll see a little uh little nepotism in sport there although i wouldn't hold your breath it's it's you've seen i Ever since seeing Charlie Woods, like he's a great golfer, obviously unbelievable. But he's not like he gets killed by a bunch of kids. I think, right? Like, he's not like the next Tiger Woods. I know it, and neither is Bronny, even though they, you know, rigged the draft to get him in there. Okay, man, we're not gonna stand here for some Bronny slander right now, bro. It's not Bronny slander; it's LeBron slander. You can get on board with that. Nah, I can't. That man bared the flag for the U.S. going to the Olympics. I'll get on board this with year, you. This year, did he? Did he stand for the anthem? Yeah, he stood for the anthem. He he did, did he? Get, he he did get chirped at because he he kind of broke off a little bit before the anthem ended at their first game and started yelling and but you know <laughs> he, he, maybe he had his AirPods in. I don't know. I don't know. Can't judge. Uh, no. So yeah, it's just today. It's just one of those crazy days in tennis where Djokovic has done something new that no one like. Yeah, really. Well, he's got to a level that no one's got to. He's right. joined. I think there's only five people who've won a Golden Slam, all four majors, and the gold medal in the Olympics. Um, and you're just like he's it. Like I just kept saying, he completed the game of tennis. There's nothing left for him to win or accomplish, and it is like truly incredible. And uh, yeah. that's got to be the that's got to be the greatest feeling ever. There's all these memes, all these pictures of him in his trophy cabinet with his hair, headphones in, listening, kind of thinking back over the memories of his career, and just with every single possible thing he can win in there. He, if he wanted to, starting tomorrow, he could live the Snoop Dogg life. What's the Snoop Dogg life? Just a, a life full of side missions where <laughs> he's just doing whatever he wants. I mean, Snoop Dogg, who is he with? What He was with some team today, and it was like, <laughs> how did – you probably didn't even know this sport existed until like two hours ago. <laughs> and then he showed up. I love how we're talking about Snoop Dogg in two different podcasts. Hey, yeah, we, we got to get him on the show. Snoop, I know you're watching, man. Have your people reach out to our people, <laughs> and we'll, we'll make it happen.
Which or, this is this is a little uh, funny little side note for you. You know, do you know who Rich Eisen is? No. So he was one of the first guys on Sports Center. He was with Stuart Scott, and then right. he left uh, ESPN to go to the NFL Network, and basically he built the NFL Network, and now he has his own show. Oh, the Rich Eisen own- show. Now I think I've seen him. Yeah. Yeah. So he's really good friends with Marty Fish. Okay. And Rich was te- Rich came today. Well, spoiler. So hopefully, you know, the Bussin fans. We <laughs> spoke to Rich today. Maybe it wasn't in Nashville. Maybe it was. And he was telling me, he was like, I think I could win a point off of Alcaraz. Rich, Rich I said like, that. Yeah, Rich is like late 50s. He said that he could win a point off Alcaraz. And he doesn't even he doesn't even play tennis, really. Oh my god. He said this would be his strategy. He should be and killed. He said, he said that Marty is trying to help him set it up for next year, Indian Wells. So I'll be sick if we both could get out there. But he was like, see, <laughs> the guy's so stupid. Um, he's like, see, I didn't know this, but on your serve, if you hit them with the ball, then it's then it's your point. So I would just keep serving slower and slower. He would get a little bit co- too confident, walk all the way up to the service box line, and then I try to smash one at him. And then I think I'd get my point. That might be the dumbest thing I've ever heard. There is no chance if you're not playing tennis on the regular, and even if you are, that you're going to be able to hit a guy. Like It's still far away away if he's at the service line. It won't be hard enough at all. And it wouldn't be hard enough. Alcaraz would dodge or he'd just like volley it out of the air and just like smash it back at you. I'll, and I don't even know if that's a real rule. I think it has to hit the court to be in. Yeah. I, yeah, I have no <laughs> idea where he was getting that from. Maybe Marty Fish told him that. I don't know. But... uh that's funny though. That is a funny anecdote. I've I have thought about that. And like one of the video segments I would like to do once we get a little bit more, you know, liberty within the tennis media community for 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 us to do content with players at tournaments. Although we just gotta essentially just do a content with them outside of tournaments. But I would love to like challenge players. And I think fans would love to see this because I'm like a 4.550 player level. So I can like I could like rap the here's the level I'm at. I could like rally with any of the pros, like just to warm them up like if they were playing like a point to win it would be pretty boring it would be like them winning every single point essentially but i would be able to like return their serves and stuff and really yeah 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 not like every one not like easily but like you would be able to return their serves yes how many lessons (laughs) have you had I don't, I've had a lot. I played junior tennis, but and like it's 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 not as hard as you oh, think. Oh, you played junior tennis? Yeah, but like like I started at 16. I actually started late. But the point is, I could return. I would like to do a thing where it's like, okay, hey Nick Kyrgios, it would be tough. It, like his serve would be hard to return. I don't know if like I would love to do like, hey, I'm gonna challenge. Let's play a tiebreaker, and it's like if I get more than two points against you in this tiebreaker, best of seven, then, or if I get one point or something like that. Then it's like you give money to charity or whatever, or it's something you have to do something ridiculous. And because like a guy like Rich Eisen who can't play tennis at all, there's no, there's almost no chance he's winning any points. But and the tiebreaker, at least I get a serve. So it's like I can cra- I can still, serve. I can still kind of crack a serve. Like I can get it to probably around a hundred miles an hour. Whoa. In, which is not that like that's not that hard. Like it's in the grand scheme of things, that's like most guys like second serves. No, so, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, that is hard. In the pro right. world, maybe not, but right in the pro world. So, like, say my average for a service speed was like 90, 95 miles an hour. There's a good chance that what, like, in a, in, in two, four, six, like six service points that I have, they might just like shank a return or like hit it in the net. Cause it's also cause it's like a, terrible quality shot compared to what they're used to so they might just get ahead of it and dump it in the net or something and then it'd be like that i think that'd be a funny or a fun thing to do and it's like kind of short you see like youtube golfers golf with pros all the time they get like a crazy like head start it's always fun so i I thought something like that would be fun i don't know how this came up yeah no well we definitely do need to make that happen because i know of another media personality that is going to be in cincinnati and he's doing something similar with ben shelton and it feels like stolen valor. I'm happy for him, but it feels like stolen valor from you. Anyways. And so I think we we're, we're gonna we're gonna set this up. And obviously, I'm. It doesn't matter what pro is out there. I'm Team Steven. Appreciate that doesn't it. mean I won't have my doubts, but 
I'm I'm Team Steven. Appreciate it. I think it would be, uh, you know, you're speaking of Sarah Arani earlier. I'd take my chances in the tie rig. I think with her with her serve. Do you know her story at all? Nah, I just a little bit I saw today. So she won. I'm pretty sure she won Wimbledon in singles back in the day, mm-hmm. and and then has won a bunch of doubles event majors because she's amazing in doubles. But she got these serving yips where she became like famous oh, for how bad man. her serve was. Like it would be like 60 miles an hour. Yeah. Like if I was playing her, I would be crushing returns. Anyone would like me. Yeah. Like literally essentially like you. So it actually like literally like ended her career kind of like she like, I think she started to play doubles. I haven't kept up with it to be fair, but then she started coaching uh, Paulini wow. who this, this year I believe started coaching her like in the spring and Paulini yeah. went from being like an, an okay top hundred player, like middle of the road, to making the Wimbledon or the USO or sorry, the French Open final and the Wimbledon final. We're gonna need a clip this and for then the- winning a medal with, together. They played doubles together and they won a medal at at the Olympics. Isn't that we, crazy? We need to clip that for people. That that is a that's that's dope. Yeah, I know it is crazy. I think I hope I got all the facts right there because uh, it's not wasn't top of mind. Uh, but Sarah Arani, legend, turned it around. She was a meme for a while. Like her serve was like a meme. It was like when guys were having the serving yips, people would be like, "Oh, he's pulling a Sarah Arani." Like savage. That is savage. Hey, look at her now, though. Look at her now. She'll be like, "Oh, what? You mean getting a go- uh, a medal?" I don't know if it was gold. I don't think it was gold, but uh, it was a medal. Uh, okay, that's pretty great. That's pretty. That's so, funny. That's a lot to hey, get into. Hey, maybe the the player you can do it against Wait, is it was gold. Yeah, yeah, they won gold. I should have said that. Uh, um, but maybe the player you can do this against is Denis Shapovalov, who we are going to talk about <laughs> next because I don't think when they, when this came across when this came across my feed, I don't think I've ever been more fed up about something in the tennis world. Honestly, you probably just heard about your lease as well, so you're ready to like commit some crime. Hey, I promise you, if I was in D.C., that umpire tower would have fallen. <laughs> And I would have been the one to take it down. Oh, man. That was just, that is a painful thing. And, you know, it's hard to feel bad. You know, it's not hard to feel bad. He's a human. You, it's, everything's relative. You know, he lost the money. Anyways, I'm going to let you set this up. But, like, you know, he's a pro tennis player. But in the state he's in and the comeback he's trying to make right now, it's a big kick in the balls. So, yeah. Yeah. So, basically, what ha- what is it? It was a triple match point for Shelton. Yep. And something goes down between Dennis and the fan. I'm assuming this person was probably chirping the whole time. And he looks up, has a few words with him, kind of like, you know, he like sort of tossed his racket down. I wouldn't even say he smashed it. Like he was still using the same racket. Yeah. But it was like, it was such a quick interaction that there was no way. He didn't even seem that heated at the fan. It was just like a quick bark at him. And then let me, Ultimately, he's probably like, let me just get back to this point so Shelton probably serves it out and wins, and then we'll get out of here. Essentially, yeah. And then, next thing you know, that umpire, whoever it is, comes down and is like, hey, disqualified, and then Dennis has more words with them. Oh, and yeah, now, crazy. what he misses out on is all of his ranking points he would have gotten from making it to the quarterfinals of yeah. ATP 500, who you shared a tweet that it was it would have bumped him from like, I don't know where he is right now, but it would have got him to like what 101. Yeah, just outside the top hundred. Just outside the top hundred, and then hunt it. I see. That man been I had like a stutter recently. there, and it made me sound like I was rapping. Can you rap? A little bit. You and Dennis, maybe y'all could maybe y'all could do a feature together. I could beatbox for him. There you go. But yeah, he loses, and he then he loses out on the the, the prize money, and like you were saying before, a guy that's coming back from injury. Trying to work his way back into that top. For someone like him, he's trying to get back to top thirty. Um, yeah, ten, top ten. Yeah, top ten. I am with you. Top five, even maybe while. top three. It's been a while, but he—that's where he should be, in my opinion. He should be. He's that talented, and so right. I just don't understand. Like, how does they, how did they just let this slide? And then I feel like it never—it doesn't even get talked about enough after it happens. Well, okay, so. I'll fill in some context there. So it got talked about a lot so far here at the tournament. Every player that's been doing media has been asked by it because of all the Canadian journalists. Uh, So what 
it wasn't apparently it wasn't the umpire that disqualified him. The umpire basically, he, I'm assuming the uh, I'm assuming the umpire heard what he said somehow, which was definitely a couple f bombs in there. Yeah, like he might have told the told the fan to go shut the front door and go, you know, fruitcake herself, something like that. Right. Really quick, you could kind of you could kind, but it wasn't like screaming it. Like yeah, exactly. The other confusing like part is back in Rome, 2022, he literally told the entire crowd to shut the Fruit Loop up. That's like what I'm while saying. talking to an umpire, he was having a conversation with the umpire. He turns around, he's like, Shut the and he didn't get disqualified there because that umpire in Rome is a G and he gets it that we're in an in the entertainment industry. If you didn't right. know that I could rap, I can make things rhyme. So can Shafa Valve. But it's crazy that so then the um, so the umpire essentially called the supervisor. And then you which I mean, what are we, are we just running a grocery store? exactly right so yeah is uh, is the who's the karen here right calling the supervisor right. he comes down and then he, the supervisor i think has the power to be like no you're fine it's just like a point penalty or game penalty or whatever it is i mean at that point any of them would have right. been like just give him a, a point penalty and then the match is over and then he keeps all of his stuff but they disqualify him like savages and yeah he loses all of his money which the guys made millions i don't feel that he probably doesn't care about the money but he loses his 100 points, which is, yeah, it literally takes him from being, for the US Open, he might, you know, hopefully get some points here in Cincinnati if he gets in. But he can't get into Cincinnati without a wild card or protected ranking. So being 130 makes you have to go to qualifying for the US Open. 100 would be like directly in. So it's a huge deal for him in his comeback. And it's, so Vashik Pospisil was asked about it and he's a big, He's got a very vocal voice on the tour, obviously with the PTPA, oh, yeah. and um, and and uh, just talking out for players' rights in general. And he was talked about it. And he was trying to talk about it in French to people because they kept asking him questions in French. But he was saying that it's just like atrocious, and that he's he's talking about how the players get treated by the the uh, ATP like you know they're the they have the final say in everything. And they he says like a lot of the people who are organizing the tour didn't play so they didn't know what it's like to be out there and be frustrated and how you can let things slip and i wanted to ask him a question except i didn't get the chance but i wanted to say like what are the how are these rules conducive to it being i've said it so many times today i feel like an entertainment business like we're in right. the entertainment business i'm in the crowd i'm an adult i'm assuming he was an adult and i'm heckling a, a player and the player tells me to f off how, how does that affect my life at all? Obviously, yeah, there should be a, a penalty for it. I don't care if you fine him five, 10 grand after the match. Right. But like people all had a ticket there to see the end of a match. They all paid. They, and if you think about it, like holistically, it's actually pretty sad. Like all these people bought, paid their own hard money. And they're not Dennis Shapoval making millions. And they wanted to see this match end. And the match got essentially ruined by the the governing body having this rule and enforcing it and the crazy thing is because you can't like the umpire's like God, if he hears it you know i'm just like just right. pretend you didn't hear it like you didn't you didn't hear it people don't We're hear things all the time. in dc like this is this is normal that that's a conversation passing by each other on the street whatever he said to that man <laughs> yeah they're that's in the swamp they're in the swamp and yeah so it's just you feel you got to feel bad for shapo there some people say he had it coming there's a lot of shapo haters out there he already Dude, doinked so the many. umpire in the face back in the Davis Cup in 2017. That, that was that was unlucky. That was unlucky. You know, so was getting hurt. People, guys are swearing on the court all the time. Trust me, I've been around it all the time. Right. Every single match, I would guess that every single player says a swear word. And you're not allowed to swear at all. So it's not just swearing at a fan. You're not allowed to swear at all. But the, it seems like the rules are implemented, as Vashik said today, in an inconsistent way. And it feels like, Shapoval just got punished by someone having a bad day. Maybe right. the guy, the, the the supervisor was fighting this, with his old lady that day or something. He just had a bad mood. Um, so, anyways, yeah, feel bad for Shapo. People were wondering, does does he get unfair treatment? Is he kind of targeted because he's a little? He, he is definitely more abrasive to the umpire community in general. Right. That's hard. No one will ever know. But you know, he's definitely given it to a lot more umpires than other players. And maybe there's like a brotherhood of umpires there who are like, yo. This guy's in our bad books. We got a right. chance. But this is to, this is when you need because like Shelton, he was obviously kind of like, well, this is whack. Like <laughs> he should not be getting disqualified. But it's like you gotta get the players. I'm glad they were talking about it today. But dude, 
freaking tennis players suck at social media <laughs> because <laughs> when something yeah. like that happens, it's so, I promise you, if you are a tennis player that ever sees this, if something like that happens to a, a fellow player, especially one that a lot of players like, like a lot of people like Dennis uh, amongst the players, right? Go online, use your audience and say, Hey, obviously your tweet won't do anything in the moment, but you show your support. It creates yeah. more of a brotherhood on the tour and the fans will eat it up for you. Every single person wins and it brings more awareness to the situation. So, yeah, I thought it was super sweet of Ben to like, Ben was literally like, you took this win away from me to the umpire. Right. Like he wanted to fill it. Fill it Obviously he doesn't want Shapo to get taken out for that. And then, yeah, it was, I saw one guy in the comments, uh, Bob, Alexander Bublik. He said, we're back at the circus. You know, he's, he voiced his support and obviously right. Vashik did today. Um, so anyways, yeah, that was, that was a clown show, you know, chapeau, I guess if you're him, you just got to watch your mouth out there. You can't be doing that. Cause you don't, you don't know what these umpires got out for you. So, yeah. uh, or the establishment has got out for you. So it's, that was a tough one to see for sure for chapeau. So I'm going to be interested to see this week on how much of a tear he goes on and just absolutely Dude. it's either he's going to lose first round or like, I feel like have a run here because he's got, he's got the wild card. He's got the home support and he's created some serious magic on this Montreal court before beating Rafa Nadal in 2017 when he was like 18 years old. The coming out party happened thing. at this tournament. At this tournament on the court that I was sitting on today. And that was one of the crazier moments in the last seven years in general. So that, uh, that was sick. I love why. Because I feel like they always post that clip of him beating oh, yeah. him like, you know, randomly on tennis TVs and scream account or whatever. And yeah, the crowd just ooh, juice, juice in that crowd. Yeah, so I guess that 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 crowd that brings us to our, our third story is just update from the ground, right? So that crowd, I was talking to Darren Cahill. This is I love talking about this, and I've tweeted about it. I've I've mentioned to a few people up here that I talked to Darren Cahill at uh, at the the draw ceremony where Sinner was there, and he was kind of like going around with him. So this is funny. So Darren Cahill's there. I'm like, you know, I got to go shoot my shot with Darren because he's one of the most respected coaches in all got tennis. To analyst ESPN I was like we got to get him on the slice so I go up to him and I probably went in a little too hard because he was like looking at, he was all by himself and I I know how to kind of act in these situations you don't want to act like a fan and I was like I was like hey Darren he's like I he's like I might he's Australian he's like I was like I was like huge fan man he's like thank you and he's I, I was kind of like he's used to that like he's getting sure. some some coaches are like have no one ever talks to them he's not one of those and I was like I think I just went straight into the I should have been like, how are you enjoying Montreal? How are things? I kind of went straight in. I was like, hey, question for you. I was like, would you ever do a do you ever do shows during a week? He's like, he's like, no, sorry, man. He's like, we he's like, I did a, a million podcasts. And he just assumed that we were a podcast, which we are. But right. I want them to not, I don't want them to think they have to come on here and do an hour. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. 10 minutes is all I need. Uh and it's a show. It's Canada's most popular tennis show. And, and like the video, drop the W in the chat. Let's go. Uh and he was like, yeah, I did a bunch of podcasts during COVID and they killed me. And uh, he's like, so he's like, I've just taken a hiatus. I'm not doing them. And I was like, I was like, fair enough. Yeah, respect right, that. Man. And then I just sat there with him. We kind of watched center. He was doing an interview. And then, and then we talked and I said, I think, <laughs> I think I threw in the name of another person I'm friends with. And he's like, oh, cool. And then we were talking. And then, and then I was like, I was like, so I heard from someone else, like the balls are flying or Yannick said the balls are flying. And then he just started talking to me about, they all like talking about nerdy tennis stuff. So he said, yeah, right. he's like, He's like, in general here in Montreal, the balls are, the balls fly. And he's like, especially this year, they're staying really firm. Like usually after like a few minutes of hitting with the balls, the balls fluff up a lot. And these Wilson balls that they're using don't. And they like, cause they use Dunlop. They use a bunch of other ones. Not our Wilson, <laughs> yeah. man. Not those Wilson balls, but yeah, same brand. <laughs> hey, whoa, chill, bro. <laughs> it's the Wilson US Open series balls. Uh, those are, those are nice though. Uh, I think those come from those come straight from Costco. I think, right? Yeah, cut. Well, you have to have an exclusive membership to go to Costco. So you tell me how special these balls are. That's a fact. That's a fact. So, but he said the balls are staying firmer for longer, and they fly. He said, and it's hard for like they're not taking spin that well. So then I got mm. really into it today when I watched friend of the show Alexi Gallarno play. So he said like. Uh, Darren said the ball doesn't take spin that well, so it's very lively. 
And I said, okay, so Sinner, does he like that? And he's like, well, no, he actually likes a ball that's a little bit more flat because Sinner likes to hit it. And he doesn't want to worry about having to control the ball mm. and have it keep it in the court. Essentially, if the ball doesn't take spin as well, that means it's like unpredictable on how they spin. So players who use a lot, use more spin, think of like a Rafa, they get the ball up and then down. Right. If the ball only, you know, doesn't come down the same way every time, then you're, you're hitting it long and you're like, what, what am I doing? So today when Alexi Gallarno, he played, he's a Canadian guy, he's ranked about 250 in the world. And he got the win today against 62nd ranked player in the world. Uh, big. Facundo Diego Alcosta. I think I messed that up, but Ooh, he, he beat a guy about 200 ranking spots ahead of him. Alexi plays very flat through the court. They have super flat backhand very clean strokes and his ball stayed in the court a little bit better than his opponent who uses a lot of spin and the ball was going long a lot. And he was like, he couldn't find his range. So anyways, Darren said that in Montreal in general, and he's been here for decades. He said right. that it's, it's been consistent throughout this time that players find it hard to feel the ball in Montreal. And part of it is that the, the stadium is like a kind of like a wide, I did talk about this on the show earlier. It's like a wide open bowl kind of, it's not as like, steep walled mm, or the stands are not a steep fan of that places. not a fan of that so the wind comes in and swirls around so it's all crazy so it's kind of like you know the u.s or the british open of golf is harder there's like more wind and elements to, to factor in than like for example like the masters which is typically a little bit more precise yeah, so you know, I went, anyways, I that's not, that was cool uh for the, the real tennis heads out there darren cahill he's like i'm not going to do the pog but i'll give you some gold nuggets uh just here some while gold we wait. balls how do you like your balls <laughs> I like my balls firm. Hey. So I can hit through the court, you know? Yes, sir. Oh. Um, <laughs> that is suspect. Okay. So wait, wait. what else is I going on in Montreal, you, though? though? Like Montreal is sick. The downtown is is awesome. It's big. Super humid here. Like I'm talking like 90% humidity. What? I got a question. You, you can yes. call on me. Yes, JP in the back. Yes, thank you. Thanks for your time. First time caller, long time listener. Um, how would we feel about if we just came up with three to five questions for these people that if you you come up, you go up to them and say, hey, instead of can you come to the show, like, hey, would you mind answering these three questions? Is that is that not is it on the table or no? That I mean, that is on the table. I got like what I'm trying to get is these video interviews, and I can't. I got to do I them off site. So I got to get these guys to come and I can't really be asking them on site either. So I got to go like, I mean, that technically wasn't on site today or yesterday. So I'm within the rules. Tennis Canada, if you are watching, right. I'm always within the rules at all times. Uh, so like basically so they don't want to see me soliciting players. They, they don't want to see me going up to players and asking them questions at, at, a, at an undesignated time. But on right. the, at the tournament, we'll have press conferences with every player. Like tomorrow, the press conference list is crazy. You want to hear, you want to hear who's on it? Yeah, drop it to me. Okay, so the press conference list tomorrow is Gabriel Diallo, front of the show, Zverev, Medvedev, Ajay Aliassim, Shapovalov, and Sinner. All right, you going to all of them? Oh, yeah, we'll be there. We'll be mixing it up with all the boys. And so they don't want me, they want you to be asking questions then. Um, See, but, you know. Yeah, we got a problem with that. Yeah, well, they're gatekeeping at the end of the day. But that's They're what gatekeeping. They it's all good. I've got connections. I've been working them. Nothing, <laughs> not to no avail yet. Uh, I had one player's mom who, who we've talked to a bunch before and she was just like, no, we'll do an interview when there's something to talk about. I was like, <laughs> she's like my, my son, people are going to figure out who it is, but my son's trying to, he's trying to recover from his injury right now. So I just let him play it. And I was like, I was like, ma'am, I got to ask again. Cause this is my only tournament here. She's like, no, sorry. I'm like, okay, Vasek. <laughs> Not Vasek. Uh, I, I didn't ask for an interview with him. No, no hate. <laughs> no, I know. But, uh, um, Man, they, see, because like when we go to NFL training camps with my job, you we they obviously they kind of have a relationship with the player a little bit, but you can go and hit them with the like, hey, start bench cut, McDonald's, mm -hmm. Taco Bell, uh, Wendy's, right? These quick hitters, so the like, videos that you know, it's just all like, and they we sell it as like a social series, so a sponsor can come in and be like, hey, you guys get to sponsor our like rapid fire questions that we hit on oh, yeah. our socials oh yeah it's awesome it's awesome that's we're, we should be there and you know the the difficult the difference here is i guess each tournament is 
making they're selling their own packages of social media clips for their own sponsors and this is their time to do it when the players are in their city for the week so they don't want me going there and doing that and every other media company doing that you know and the problem is there's like the big tv stations here they pay for the broadcast rights so they pay Mm -hmm. the ATP tour a lot of money to broadcast the tournament so they get the first kick of the can interviewing any player and then it's like basically whoever however big your outlet is and I know that for a fact, there's no bigger tennis outlets in Canada than the Slice, right. but still, you know, kind of in the world, they consider like a local newspaper bigger than the Slice, which is like, you know, love the local newspapers. Got nothing but right. love, but all good. Stay down it's all to your game. Up, you know, it's I all do. part of the game. I'm happy to be here. Tennis Canada gave us accreditation this year. It's my first time on the ground. And yeah, I felt like it's a home away from home. I've had like five people come up to me in the last day and a half saying, hey, uh, Dave, Chris, I'm forgetting a few other names. I hate, hate, hate to see it, but I've felt the love big time and appreciate you guys doing that. You're like, oh yeah, real people actually watch my show. It's not just Joko fan 3000 telling me to off myself. You know, that's hey, t- the tell the people, tell the people that tweet that, that you got or the comments. <laughs> no, just comments. You can go, you can go look like the, they're not even, you know, pro players get the DMS. That's one mm-hmm. thing. I get this straight up in the comments. People are telling me to off myself. It's not even, not even people aren't even trying to hide it. Which is fair because it's YouTube and you can have a fake thing easily. But uh, no, it, it was one guy said, "This is why you have no father." or Something I'm like, mm. I do, I do. My dad is great, great man, still alive. Uh, yeah, if you got crazy. if you followed Stephen, you would have seen him on his Instagram story just the yeah. other day. That's a fact. He's old. He's 82, but he's and still killing it. Watched PSA. my whole one the other week. Oh yeah, true. He's there for the big moments in life, and also PSA to because when I'm put up my little tweet about Dennis and how it was messed up. There are some haters in the comments and I think we need to make a switch to Twitter or a switch on Twitter of, I don't think burner accounts. I'm like, I like kind of like the burner game. I don't have a burner, but I can respect like a good one. That's probably not true. JP doesn't have a burner. I don't have a burner cause I'm, I'm straight up and I stand on business 10 toes down all day, every day. That's true. That's true. I can see that. You know, I was starting to think though, all these joke potatoes. I was like, it's one of these guys, JP it's telling me how he really feels. Yeah. But if man, if you are gonna, there has to be some way because I'm tired of these non profile picture. Nobody is like everybody that hates is too afraid to put their name on it. And I just want everybody to know that I have zero respect for you. If you're one of those people doing that, if you're hating on people from behind, uh, you just still have the egg as your profile picture. Yeah. And, or some version of that. Yeah. If you're not willing to come on a plane and right. fight me, I have no respect for you. Exactly. <laughs> so line it up. If anybody's interested, leave it in line the comments. It up, JP you have to be subscribing in order to get that opportunity to get the fight. Yeah. You have to subscribe and pay for your own flight to Tennessee or Montreal or wherever I am and pay for your own medical bills. Right. After JP lays down a couple elbows. And and if you and if you do win, you have to pay for mine. So that's right. You have to pay for his, and you can't win to a point where his face gets injured at all because he needs it for the podcast. Right. I have headgear on. You don't. We'll we, we'll get the details down if you want to make this happen. Yeah, but for sure. We can hit our last segment if unless we have some more that we uh that you want to talk no. about Montreal. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. You guys, will, we'll get all. The, you guys, stay tuned to the at the slice tennis on Twitter, Instagram, and at the slice Steven on Twitter. Because I'm updating for Montreal all week, not all week, till Wednesday. And uh, yeah, there's going to be lots going on. To, you know, today was only the first day of qualifying. Tomorrow's the second day of qualifying. The day after that is the first day of the main draw, which would be Tuesday. And then the day after that is the second draw. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I'll be, I'm here. I'm in this. Hey, make sure you, uh, make sure you tell, tell Dennis I said, hey. I will. I'll tell Dennis. I'll say, and that actually might be a, a good conversation starter. So I'm going to use I that. I think it would be. Dennis so, JP says hi. He's like, he's like, bro. Like, who he he moved with a Conor McGregor? Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that guy? Now, if he did that, I, I'd probably I'd probably have to square up with him at that point. Yeah, honestly. I'd square yeah, up. I'm tell him JP JP Hovey, man. Um, no, he knows. He knows for sure. So we'll get him. We'll get you on there. Who knows? Maybe we'll get the double podcast going with him. Some other players. Huge. We got things cooking here, right? I'm cooking. So just stay tuned. That's just all. Let I him cook. We, we can move on to the next segment. All right, smash your pass, and yes. we only have five for y'all, so we're almost done out of here. Thank you, everybody, for listening and staying tuned to the boys. All right, first one, 
Novak Djokovic says he wants to play in Los Angeles in the 2028 Olympics. Are you smashing or passing? I am passing. Unless he just... Oh, nobody is shocked. Huh? Oh, and the that? crazy thing is it's all about rankings, I think, still. So it's I was thinking like he could play because I think he's going to retire before that because like what is he else does he have to play for? Just like, to keep smashing the record. Well, yeah, it's good. You know, you people forget that Alcaraz is still 21. He's got about four years until he peaks, and he's already won four majors, and uh, yeah, and Sinner, and Chapo. I'm just saying, I don't, you and know, Chapo. everyone, you know. So I think I was thinking in my head, I was like, maybe Djokovic will just come back and do like a special exemption and like play the mixed doubles or something, because like I'm sure at that age he'd still be able to play unbelievable doubles. But I don't think you can do that. You have to be like have a ranking. I think it's take the best players based on ranking. So I'm passing on that. Not yeah, we'll happy. Fixed. Wouldn't expect you to really understand the Olympics, anyways, because the U.S. we we know about the Olympics. <laughs> we we bring in the medals, so I'm smashing because yes. this is how it works. When you're a winner, you get to make the rules. And by 2028, Djokovic will be able to say, "Hey, guys, I'm playing doubles for Serbia," and you guys are gonna love that I'm playing the doubles because everybody's gonna come watch. You're gonna make more money. So it's I'm true. He's gonna be, and he's gonna be the president of Serbia that, by that time. So he's gonna really call the shots. I might have to finesse dual citizenship. See if I can get on the ballot with him. <laughs> I don't think no you're blade, tall enough. No blaze. I don't think you're tall enough to be a Serbian citizen. Whoa, bro! I'm six foot. I know. Have you seen those guys? They're like Djokovic is a short Serbian. He's six yeah. foot two. I know it is crazy. Jokic, Nikola Jokic. Yeah, but he's he now he's not gonna be out the minute his NBA career is over. That man's disappearing forever. Oh, for sure. That's that's yeah, that's for sure. You know, Serbia's Serbia's tough though. You can I love Serbia. You know, that's I've wanted to go there. My friend did go there and got like you know carjacked by a Ooh. by a cab driver. <laughs> not carjacked. What's it called? He like he was reaching in his wallet and the guy like he like guy like stole money out of his wallet and then he like threatened him. <laughs> he got jumped kind of. Essentially, yeah, and he's or like, Rob. yeah, I'm not trying to start anything with this massive cab driver in the middle of, uh, of uh, what's the what's this what's the capital there? I forget. Anyways, anyways, this is not a quick quick hit smasher pass, but you're you're smashing on Djokovic playing 2020. Yeah, I need in that in Los Angeles. Maybe we could both be there for that. Ooh, nice let's go. One. Okay, smash or pass, rain delays. Pass, bro. We need to figure out something. Whether <laughs> we gotta just start putting roofs everywhere, or maybe we just up our technology. We make some waterproof balls, make these courts with a better, uh, better type of whatever surface we're on. Better clay, better concrete, better grass. Some yeah, something was, to I, keep the the fans though. Like obviously, we can't actually be playing during the rain, but something to keep the fans more involved during the rain delays. I don't know what it would be, but. Maybe you pay players. Tough. That's what the bars are for. Yeah, but Eventually. these drinks are expensive out here. But maybe you pay players to do appearances. I don't know, well, something like that. It's it's a gong show out here, man. I can't wait till you get. Have you been accredited at a tennis tournament ever? No, I've yeah. only just had the the player guest pass. Flex on me like that. That's crazy. Yeah, come on, man. Who was that with again? Was that with Chapo? Yeah, in Cincinnati, dude. So he's of course like JP's humble. He's like friend he's like legit friend of the show chapel will, will of course know you we gotta so, get him, uh, we gotta bring him on i just yeah, wish we yeah. could do it all in person because oh, it'd be so fun i know we'll get there um my thought was i thought you might have some type of like glass half full look at the rain delays you'd be like bro it's a chance to to calm down and reflect even though they're super Doing annoying the like, represents yeah it, it rained a few times today so i saw like kakanakis another friend of the show like start, stop, start, stop, Ooh. and then I get to the left because it was like I can't. Yeah, these raindrops here in Montreal are massive. It was crazy. It was raining on me while I was doing my show. Like literally, I was out in the wild. Grit. That's what that is. That's right. I'm not. I'm like. I'm like Putin. I'm not made of. I'm not made of sugar. <laughs> Golly, that guy, man. We'll, we'll have another. We'll have a separate podcast about him and the other politics <laughs> going on in the world. Um. Yeah. Next one. Silver medal sadness. Smash or pass. Smash or pass? I would. Yeah, I would pass. I think I would pass on this. I don't think you should be sad about getting silver medal. Although I get it in at Alcaraz. In at Alcaraz. There's like a few guys 
and Alcaraz is one of them, and Djokovic is one of them, that it will be sad if you get a silver because you're trying to win every tournament you play. But if, yeah. for example, let's say that Felix Algeria seemed beat Alcaraz in the semifinals and then made the then made the final and he played Djokovic or something. Right. If Felix loses to Djokovic in the gold medal match, he gets silver. He's pretty happy about silver. Yeah, that, that's, that's a great point. If Djokovic loses to Alcaraz, he ain't happy about that silver. I'm telling you that. That's a great I'm point. I'm not happy about that silver either. Even though he probably accepts it more easily than a Djokovic would, but every, you know, those top players are there for the gold. But every other athlete, like if you if you get like a silver medal in like a in like a, the marathon or whatever, I think people are pretty happy in general. So I think in general you should be happy about getting a medal for your country because it's not about you. If you if you're like sad about not getting gold, you're kind of more thinking about yourself than than the country. I think. You know, prior to hearing your explanation, I was going to say uh, smash, but I think I agree with you. You swayed me, and I don't want to get too far into it because I did want to ask you: Would you rather win? A single silver medal or doubles gold medal? Single silver medal. All right. All day. What about you? Give me the gold. In doubles. Uh, so I can be an Olympian gold medalist. So what you're saying is Federer getting the doubles gold medal makes him have a, a golden slam. No. Because That's there's hate. two different golden slams. That's Federer hate right there. Don't we don't put up with Whoa, that? Oh, I love Federer. We don't put up with that. You know who you know who's outmatched in the world? Who? Federer haters. There's not a lot of them. I know. I, I'm not I'm definitely not a Federer hater. That's my that's my guy, man. He could he could be full CIA. He might have he could be like world economic for him. He, he's from Switzerland. He could have you whacked. He yeah. probably if if I really was a hater, he would be the one that would be messing with my apartment situation. <laughs> it's true. It's oh. true. Okay, smash or pass. That's good. I, I I persuaded you with my with my argument for not being sad about silvers. Okay, uh, smash or pass. Getting recognized in public as normal people. You wrote this Said. one. Love it. Yep. Said normal people is me and Steven, and it is a massive smash for me yeah. personally because growing up, huge sports fan. Anytime I got to like meet a whether it was a college football player, yeah, like a, a professional coach, even. It was the biggest deal in the world, and taking a photo with them was like incredible. And then now that I've I've gotten to experience like I've just a, gotten to experience it at the smallest level with our current job in Nashville. Sometimes people see like, oh, JP the boy, or we'll go to Nebraska, another city. They're like, hey, can we get, can we grab a photo? I'm like, love to see it, dog. Of course we can grab a photo. We can grab twelve photos, but. When they ask me to sign something, I'm still not comfortable because I have such bad handwriting. In my so you don't sign, you don't, people ask you and you say no. Oh, no. Hey, trust me. I'm not saying no to anybody. <laughs> but I like my signature. It Every single time it looks different. So I got, I've, I've been practicing. That's okay. That's How okay. about you? Yeah. Smash. I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, it's not that cool. No, it's freaking cool. Yeah. Like I said, a few people, a few fans of the show come up and I'm like, I do not ever want to be seen as that guy who like doesn't have time for people, right? Especially at my level here. This is like, yeah, I think I'm literally at the lowest level you could possibly be at of fame where you get recognized. Like people, like I got recognized in Rome and Sweden, where like at tennis tournaments where I go, because it's tennis. I mean, global. I'm global. I will say, actually, the one that I don't, I'm not bragging. Trust me, I'm not bragging. But the one in Sweden was in downtown Sweden, <laughs> downtown Sweden, downtown Stockholm. Not even near the tournament, and it's just like, "Hey, you're the guy from the slice." Yo, like, that's sick. What the? F but like, so I I never. So it's funny. Like one of the guys today, his name, I think it was like Eric or something, something with an E. He's from Switzerland, in Montreal, visiting his girlfriend. Shout out! I was like, long distance. Oh. I was like, bro, you got a girlfriend here and in Switzerland. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, but he was like. He like said, Hey, he's like, Hey man, he's like Steven from the slice. I was like, Hey man. And he was almost kind of like didn't want to take any of my time and kept walking. Right. Like vibe. Cause I've done that to players. Like, I want to be like, hey, and I'll keep walking so you don't feel like you have to stand and talk to me because you don't want to. I know you don't. Right. And so, but I was like, I'm almost I'm like, hey man, what's going on? And he's like, I was like, tell me about yourself. I want to have a conversation. I want to like I talk know. To you guys. I don't want to ever to be like, hey man, like walk by you. Hey, see ya. Like, 
I'm not that guy, right? So right I'm here, I actually gave another guy I met today. I'm forgetting his name, but we're I gave my number and we might play tennis at 7 a.m. one of these days. He's gonna hook me up with a a clay court near the tournament. We're gonna play tennis for an hour before before we go to the the media. So we, hey, we got to get some footage of that. It's a community. It's not. It's not. Uh, but it is nice being recognized. It kind of shows that there's people out there that actually watch your show. Like the video today, the the video analysis today has like over thirty five thousand views. And you kind of forget that you're like, oh, that's a cool number. You forget that that's like 35,000 humans. It's incredible, bro. And a lot of work has gone into it. So I do hope you, I hope you feel good about yourself because you deserve to feel good about yourself. You put a lot of time into it and you deserve it. And I promise you, it's only the beginning. Soon we're going to get Steve. Steven is going to be working for TSN. Whoever he wants to work for, call yeah. these matches. It's going to happen. I appreciate it. We all feel, we deserve, everyone deserves to feel good about themselves um you know except for like you know some people out there really bad people who like commit heinous crimes but right. you know even then i believe in redemption getting way for too sure. deep i'm tired uh for and my laptop's dying so to wrap this up wait do we have one more yeah but we can we can okay. save it for next week we can save it we can save it for next week cliffhanger cliffhanger we're gonna be talking about mean tweets uh but jp great week i in general think that our community here on the slice is the best there is. The tennis fan community is awesome. Every time I meet someone, they're like, I'm so stoked to be at this tournament. I'm like, I'm so stoked to be here. It's like tennis festival. Yeah. Everyone's here is nerding out at JP. I can't wait till we are together at a tournament. We can get a little desk. We can be hitting it up like week daily updates from like the US Open or something. It'd be moving. Uh, it'd be epic, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. It's going to be. I can't wait. It's just something, something special about it, bro. Something something special about these moments that we're building, and there's only one way one way to say goodbye to these people. That's the Sunday. That's our Sunday night, and that's what Stephen. That's the slice. Come on, I got it right this time. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. He's that dialed. is a slice. You've been sliced. You've been sliced. Okay, I, we can get it. We can get behind that. Your pizza. I'm like you've been chopped up. Okay. Yeah, maybe we'll 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 workshop that. <laughs> JP's like, I'm editing this. <laughs> All right, bro. <laughs> Good luck out there tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Stay tuned, everyone. We will see you on the Instagram and the Twitter and in the trenches in the media huddles. Peace out.